You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO Television. And now, here's two guys that have been banned from swimming in the Bay of Fundy for wearing Speedos, Evan and Joe. Welcome to Mick and T Sports Report here on CHCO TV. I'm Joe Tykotsky down in New Haven, Connecticut. I'm Evan McFarland here in very, very wet St. Andrews, New Brunswick, Canada. This is episode 18 for us. Wow. That's one. What is that? One, five, three. There you go. Very good. A lot. (laughs) Very good. Um, We have two more (laughs) great guests coming up on what will be basically Saskatchewan Day on the show. But I wanted to quickly talk about getting my second COVID vaccine shot in late March. Um, After my first shot, I really had no symptoms at all. Um, After the second shot, very minor symptoms. About 24 hours later, had a slight fever for maybe 12 hours with a temp of about 38 degrees. And uh, that's Celsius. So you Americans can do the conversion yourselves to Fahrenheit. But um, it wasn't bad at all. And of course, as you know, Evan, there was a story involved once again. Of course, always. (laughs) Yes. First time there was the old woman who I helped in. uh, to the uh, facility. And this time, uh, as I was walking in, there was a, a kid, like a 12 year old boy there. And he says to me, excuse me, sir, do you need any help walking in? Uh, I said, do you know, Evan McFarland from Canada, yeah. did he put you up to this? Um, I, I told I told that kid, I'd give him a toonie if he did it. And he, he, he had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, but Connecticut is really moving. I'll give a shout out to Governor Lamont. Um, and by the time this show airs in mid-April, uh, everyone in the state age 16 and older will have had the ability to sign up for the vaccine. So on a serious note, we do hope everyone gets it in a very, very uh, painless and easy procedure. So as soon as they're able to, we hope everybody does. All right, let's move on to music spotlight. Yeah, so I, I stuck to the, the Atlantic Canadian theme that I like to run with and pump the tires of uh, bands this way, but... Got a good five-piece full Celtic rock band from Halifax called the Stanfields. I've seen them a couple times, and man, do they put on a show. They are awesome. I was wondering if their lead singer was actually named Stan Field. That would be awesome. Maybe. Uh, And we do have a song from them, so we will stop uh, chatting and uh, play it. This is called Welcome to the Ball. Searching for a feeling, don't know what to believe in. How do you deal with it all? When you're going through the paces, trying to fill the blank spaces, how do you live with it all? There's a time to proclaim that the world won't drag you under. There's a whole other way. All right, that is uh, the Stanfields and welcome to the ball. The clock on the wall tells me it's time to get rolling with our interviews. And first up is our fourth interview with someone from Canada that will be in the next Olympics, but the first time that it is with a coach. So we hope you enjoy our first interview. Today's guest was a student at McMaster University in Ontario, who then played basketball professionally in Greece. She's been the women's coach at the University of Saskatchewan since 1998, where her teams have won two national championships and seven Canada West titles, and she's also the school's career leader in wins. In 2013, she was named head coach of the Canadian women's national team, And in the 2016 Olympics in Rio, her team finished seventh, while the following year they won their first ever Pan Am Games gold medal. Let's welcome Lisa Tomitis to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for the intro. Sure thing. Um, Long list. (laughs) (laughs) How much growth in girls and women's basketball have you seen in Canada over the past five or 10 years? And what are some of the things that you can attribute that growth to? 
Yeah, we've seen a ton of growth, which is amazing to watch. You know, I think we're starting to see it expressed in, you know, the talented athletes that we're seeing on top programs in the NC2A um, coming up through our junior national team program and pushing for positions on our senior national team. But um, yeah, you know, the opportunities are just, there's so many more uh, these days than there have been in the past. Uh, we now have prep schools in Ontario, well, throughout Canada, actually, but in, uh, in Ontario, they've really taken off. Um, you know, the AAU circuit, I guess you could say, you know, Kia Nurse Elite has her own program going as well to offer opportunities for young women. Um, the club system's always been pretty strong here. Um, but I, again, I think it's really taken off across the country. And we just have, we just seem to have more and more female athletes that are wanting to play basketball and, and pursue it at a very high level. So yeah, we're definitely seeing that it's, it's exciting, exciting to watch. Um, what has spurred that on? I think just, again, exposure, exposure to the women's game. I think, um, you know, I was thinking back, our very first Olympics was 2012 when I was a, an assistant coach. And I think that was probably the first time that our national team was showcased on national TV in Canada. Uh, uh -huh. Prior to that, I'm not sure anyone would have seen our national team play unless you happen to, you know, maybe see an exhibition game in BC, British Columbia, where we would have been training prior to that. But so I think that was a real turning point. Um, young girls being able to see women play at such a high level. And then that's just been a, a compounding effect to then be on TV. Uh, again, we hosted Pan Am Games in 2015 and it was in Toronto and the place was packed. We beat a US team that had uh, Brianna Stewart on it and uh, Kia Nurse was on our team. And again, that was another watershed moment, I think, to play in Canada in front of a packed house on national TV winning our first ever Pan Am gold medal and doing it against the US. So I think, again, all of these things just continue to um, create such momentum and, and, uh, and interest in our sport. Great. We're just getting started with Canadian women's basketball national team coach, Lisa Tomitis. We'll be back right after this short break to talk Olympic basketball, as well as some University of Connecticut, Canada connections. You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. Welcome back to Mick and T Sports Report. I'm here in beautiful, getting warmer St. Andrews, New Brunswick, Canada. My co-host, Joe Tukoski, as always, down in New Haven, Connecticut. And our guest today is the head coach of Saskatchewan University women's basketball team, as well as the head coach of the women's Olympic team, Lisa Tinnitus. Lisa, this will be your second Olympic Games this year as head coach. Um, when do you think your team's officially going to be picked? And did the fact that your college season was canceled this year actually allow you to kind of plan a little bit differently? Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess first off, like our Olympic roster, of all, our Olympic team is likely going to be chosen towards the end of June. Um, we won't have our WNBA athletes at that point in time, but they will be joining us in, in Tokyo. So it's going to be a little bit of a different setup in that we'll have a, a roster of 12 that will train together and, and then we'll head over to Japan and, and then our, our WNBA athletes will join us at that time. Um, yeah, like our, our collegiate season being canceled really enabled me to watch a lot of our athletes a lot more than I have in the past to stay connected with them a lot more than I have in the past. Um, you know, typically our national team programming is, is primarily in the spring and summer. And then, you know, we, we all kind of take a break and I go back to my university team and our players go back to, um, their professional teams in Europe for the most part. And obviously some players in the NC2A or U sport level in Canada. Um, so this was a very unique situation in that we were able to stay connected throughout the year. Um, unfortunately not able to train together on court. Um, the last time we were in person, uh, was, last February when we actually qualified for the Tokyo games. And so it's been 13 months now coming up to 14 months where we haven't been able to train face to face and be connected, um, you know, in the same location. So everything's been done like in a virtual setting like this and uh, just trying to grow and get better in this type of environment, which has been a challenge for sure, but it's, it's forced us to be creative and, and find new ways to continue to improve. Coach, um, I noticed there are uh, 27 Canadians playing in the NCAA Division I women's tournament this year. But since some of our audience is from Connecticut, 
Um, I have to ask you about UConn standout freshman, Aaliyah Edwards, who is from Canada. And there she is with the current governor of Connecticut. <laughs> um, what type of potential do you see for Aaliyah as a player? And what are her chances of making this summer's Olympic team? Yeah, I mean, Aaliyah's just been phenomenal. It's been so great watching her. Um, you know, compete and, and get a chance to even be in the starting lineup here in, in critical games. And, and for us, you know, with our athletes, when they go to big time programs in the U S we don't want them just to go there and, and play a small role. We really think it's important that they go wherever they go and play meaningful minutes and, and be relied upon, be counted on to be those go-to players. And I think Aaliyah in her first year has just showed out, like she's done so well. Um, and to be honest, it's not a surprise. She is such a competitor. I thought, um, you know, in the time that we had the opportunity to work with her, she's very mature. She's, um, you know, advanced as far as uh, takes her game very seriously, just wants to continue to grow and improve. And we were really excited when um, she made the decision to go to UConn because we just knew that she was going to continue to to really learn the game and, and develop under the tutelage down there. So it's great to see the amount of growth that she's had this past season. Um, you know, I think she's really embraced her role. And, you know, I think when she went there, she probably had a wide array, array of things that she could do well and not that she can't do that now, but she just seems to have honed in on what she does best. And, uh, you know, she is just absolutely phenomenal on the glass. And I think that's been showcased in a lot of these these tournament games, um, you know, scores around the rim has such an amazing uh, motor and just never stops. And I think just her relentlessness, you know, whether it be in transition on the glass is really showing up. Yeah. So that's been, that's been fun to watch. Um, you, you know, may, she's uh, in her, sorry, go ahead. She may come home with a little New England accent this winter. <laughs> well, we'll have to get rid of that pretty quick. <laughs> um, in addition to her, can you talk a little bit about another fan favorite, um, former UConn star Kia Nurse, who is now with the Phoenix Mercury of the WNBA? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Kia, I think, laid the groundwork there. Maybe there's a little bit of a, um, a pipeline now from, from Canada to, to UConn now that uh, Aliyah is there also. But, I mean, Kia is really... Set, set quite a standard for Canadian basketball and, um, you know, how, how accomplished and how successful she was at UConn and, and continues to be with our national team program. Like I said, she was a, a major cog in our national team, um, you know, at the last Olympics through the Pan Am Games in America Cup and at World Championships. So she's a, she's a seasoned, um, seasoned vet at the young age of 25. Um, you know, plays a, a very large role and uh, both on the court, but in our leadership group as well. So, um, you know, just again, tough, tough competitor. Um, I think her mental toughness really sets her apart from a lot of her, um, I don't want to say teammates, but a lot of, the, of her competitors, um, right. you know, just her ability to work and to continue to improve and add to her game. And, uh, you know, she, she was really a defensive stopper that became a, uh, was an attack the rim type player, became, you know, an amazing three point shooter and just continues to add now pull up jumpers to her game um, and continues to be, you know, the, the toughest defender on the court. So we're just thrilled with her and how far she's come along and um, yeah, really pumped to continue to see her growth. Great. Evan, you have one last question for Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. We mentioned earlier about the, the momentum of women's basketball and how that's picking up. But uh, I mean, in Canada, I can just see the momentum of Canadian basketball in general, like the men's team is going to be really strong. And we, I think we're in that fortunate position to have the one NBA team, the Raptors, we can embrace we the North and get that culture. But that being said, how long do you think until there's a WNBA team in Canada? Well, you know, like you said, there is such um, there is such a following right now. I think, you know, with basketball being so huge in Canada and just gaining more and more momentum and more and more support and and people behind it. The Raptors, you know, you could see just the the following and the the backing and the excitement around that team. And uh, so I think, you know, we're closer than ever. So maybe getting a WNBA team in Canada. Um, I don't see any, you know, the, the time is right right now. Mm -hmm. 
but the reality is when will it happen? Unsure. You know, I think a lot of things need to happen. I know the WNBA made it very clear last year. They're not looking to expand. They're looking to just continue to, um, you know, build their brand and in the markets that they're currently in. But uh, I sure hope that we can, we can get something happening here in Canada before long, because we really are, we're missing out, but I think the, um, we have such a, a ripe market for it at this point in time. So I hope we can jump on that um, bandwagon and bring something here before too long. Okay. Um, Lisa's Canada team has been placed in Group A for the Olympics, along with Korea, Serbia, and Spain. And come late July, we'll be sure to check out her team in Tokyo. And before she leaves, we'd also like to mention and congratulate her on recently winning the prestigious Saskatchewan Sport Award for Coaching Dedication. Uh, she is Lisa Tomitis, head coach at the University of Saskatchewan and also coach of the Canadian women's national basketball team. Coach, thanks so much for coming on the show. This has been great and best of luck this summer. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the invitation and, and thanks so much for the chat this morning. Thank you. After the break, we will continue with our Saskatchewan themed show as we head to a village called Elbow. Have you ever heard of it, Lisa? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> for another edition of Small Town Spotlight. You are watching Mick and T Sports Report. We will be right back after the break. It's time for another edition of Small Town Spotlight here on Mick and T Sports Report. Since CHCO TV is available on Bell Satellite throughout Canada, you can watch our show on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Friday nights if you live in Stansted, Quebec, Minto, New Brunswick, or a place in Nunavut called Joe Haven. And as always, you can watch the show on CHCO TV's YouTube channel, where we hope you'll subscribe. As we visit Canada's 13 provinces and territories, our 10th edition of Small Town Spotlight heads to the province of Saskatchewan, which besides being the hardest province to spell, is also home to the village of Elbow, located halfway between Regina and Saskatoon and north of Montana in the U.S. The population is just 337, but as you'll see, it's a village that offers quite a lot for those that love the outdoors. Our guest and resident elbow expert, although not in the traditional sense, is Mark Patterson. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Joe. I appreciate you having me on. All right, let's get right to it. How did the village come to be called Elbow? Well, a great question. We uh, get that quite often. Um, the Elbow was um, the, by the South Saskatchewan River, there is a bend in the river that the uh, South Saskatchewan River feeds into Lake Diefenbaker, where the village sits on, and that bend resembles a bent arm, and therefore, elbow. There you go. Uh, simpler, simpler, you know, no complex explanation. No, simple. but we also put in that we live near a town called Eyebrow, and I have no idea how it got its name. <laughs> <laughs> We actually did an interview with a uh, woman from a place in Newfoundland called Joe Bat's Arm. So we're, <laughs> we're there's a little theme going on here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in a place with just over 300 residents, you wouldn't really expect any tourist attractions. Mark, prove me wrong. Well, uh, in the summertime, our village. It expands to approximately, and the area, it expands to approximately 3,000 people. Mm. So at our local, being uh, close to Elbow, we have our 18-hole championship golf course. Of course, we have Lake Diefenbaker that is uh, famous for uh, fishing, uh, sailing, boating, all the water sports that you could think of. Um, you know, there you go, yeah. Great picture, yeah. Um, we also have uh, hunting is very popular in our area. And we have, of course, all our little shops on Main Street um, that are local artists. They uh, have artwork in there. And we also have 
um, the Canada wide walking trail, okay. which winds its way through, it goes from the East coast to the West coast and it winds its way through uh, and close to the shores of uh, Lake Diefenbaker. Okay. Now uh, there's also sand dunes local, which are just outside about five miles from here that um, when you're in the middle of it, it's a fantastic piece of area. When you're in the middle of it, it's like you're standing in the Sahara. I've never been to the Sahara, but I can imagine. Right. It is sand dunes all over the place. It's a fascinating area. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Lake Diefenbaker. Um, tell us what types of fish you typically would catch in there. Well, that I would catch? Or uh, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like everybody on the other side of the boat catches the fish, and I, I'm catching nothing catching a few rays actually. Well, uh, Lake Diefenbaker measures uh, 135 miles long and it's about 480 miles, I believe, of shoreline. And it's about, um, I think it's 217-ish feet deep. So it is perfect for walleye, for jackfish, for rainbow trout, uh, what a perch. Um, and the list goes on. So, you know, it's, we get a lot of people that come from the States as well as Canada that come to our annual walleye fishing derby, which is held in the springtime. And uh, it is probably, we get, uh, I'm going to say about two to 250 entries, uh, teams of two. Okay. So it's amazing how many people actually come and you can come 12 months of the year because ice fishing, especially with the pandemic, ice fishing now has, is booming. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Now to finish us up here, I know that you are the general manager of the elbow sunset suites and RV park. Go ahead and put a little plug in for the place. <laughs> well, it's, uh, yes, I am. And um, it's a family run business. We uh, built it in 2003. Uh, we've just expanded. So we have now uh, 55 full service uh, electrical sites, full service sites, as well as eight electrical sites. We also have beautiful picture except the snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we couldn't, couldn't find one, couldn't find yeah. one, no. Um, and we also have, uh, so we have a total of 63 sites and we also have 17 room full um, self-contained units. So you just have to bring food, all the cooking uh, pots and pans and knives, forks, plates, everything is there for you. And the, the, our guests come from all over the uh, province and as well as, the states, uh, especially when there is the uh, fishing derby on or hunting season starts, uh, we get a lot of people from the states. Okay. Now, um, finish us up. We always ask to get a little local flavor. Um, give me a recommendation for a good restaurant in Elbow. And then if you were heading to Saskatoon for a night, give me one in each place. Well, I would be in trouble if I didn't mention my wife's restaurant, uh, the Back Home Bakery in Delhi, <laughs> which is, um, is exactly what it is. It's back home. It is cooking from scratch. Um, they have a bakery there. So in the summertime, they bake every day. You walk, well, you walk in the front door there and the smell of baked goods is... Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't go in there anymore. I go in the back door um, because the front door, I mean, everything is laid out there and people just gobble it up for sure. Um, it's also filled with antiques that are, um, gives the history of Elbow plus uh, the history of the area. Okay, and the name of the bakery again is? El uh, back Home Bakery and Deli. Okay, okay, I'll have to check it out. My grandparents owned a bakery in new haven connecticut way back so I'll have to do a little yeah there and well, you, you would know what it's like then yes yes you, can't, about, you just can't go in there and and leave you have to have something in your hand when you leave well as i tell all of our small town spotlight guests if you or your wife ever make it down to new york city or boston please make a side trip side trip to connecticut 
is I'd love to show you around our state and take you out for some of our world famous thin crust pizza. I would love that. It's good. And before he leaves, I'd like our viewers to know that Mark is also the past president of PGA Canada. So we may bring him back as a guest on our regular sports portion of the show. And lastly, I'm told today is your birthday. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Yep. I'm holding at 50. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I certainly won't be uh, regaling you or the audience with a, a happy birthday, but the next time I wash my hands and sing happy birthday to myself, I'll think of you. Well, thank you very much, Joe. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much for telling us about your area of Canada, and thanks for being on the Small Town Spotlight. Well, thank you very much, Joe. I really appreciate it. Two more excellent interviews there, and uh, it's, uh, this show is almost over, so we are going to go right into the shout-outs. I will go first. I'm going to give a shout-out to Kerry Stoley, who Evan knows. Um, mm -hmm. The first year I was up there in St. Andrews, which I think is about seven years ago now, she was one of the coaches that uh, came up with me to, to work the camp, and she just recently got engaged. So we'd like to congratulate Carrie on her upcoming nuptials. And um, Evan, who do you have for a shout out? Yeah, first off, congrats, Carrie. That's, that's great. Um, hopefully sometime you do make it back here for another basketball camp. But uh, I'm going to give a shout out to somebody who's connected to basketball, too. Actually, two of them. So I'm going to do a whole family. I'm going to shout out to the local Richards family, Tom, Sue, and Max, who have been uh, saying how I need to get over there soon, but with COVID, it's just hard to do. But as soon as I'm allowed over there, I'll be there to watch every Sharknado movie going. They, <laughs> they're a great family. I know all three of them very well. And uh, just good people, as the old saying goes. Good people. All right, that's it for episode 18 of, jeez, oh, turn that call off. <laughs> um, episode 18 of Mick and T Sports Report. I'm Joe here in New Haven. And I'm Evan up here in New Brunswick, Canada. Thanks to Patrick Watt and everyone at CHCO TV in St. Andrews for helping to make us Canada's most popular TV show. I made that part up. Um, <laughs> and that pit you all feel in your stomach right now, that means we've once again come to the end of another show. And that means it's also time for the closing catchphrase. So until next time, Peace, love, and vaccines. In Timbits. This is Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. We'll see you next time.